Hey guys, how's it going? So I want to kind of go over the the beautiful, the big and beautiful what of the actual conversation. Well, what's had. going on? Yeah, Joe Rogan. I forgot I was watching his podcast. Well, that's a great way to start the video. So yeah, I want to talk about the OnePlus Seven Pro now. This, from at least from what I've read, this phone is either hated by a lot or loved by many. But from what I can tell, it's mainly the, the uh, Galaxy S10 Plus owners that for some reason don't like the OnePlus 7 Pro. And I'm kind of, you know, asking myself why. Like, in my opinion, I think OnePlus 7 owners and Galaxy S10 Plus owners should kind of like, re, like reunite together because they're literally holding the, the best phones in the entire planet. Like, there's no other phone that's as good like featured to price wise as the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. I mean, there just really isn't. Now, there are a few things that the S10 Plus has and the OnePlus 7 Pro doesn't have. Uh, mainly the ones that I really care about is just the SD card slot. Uh, but not looking at that, we also don't have an IP rating, no wireless charging and no headphone jack. Now, if we're talking about IP rating, again, I've already went over this tons of times, but I guess many people still don't understand what an IP rating is. When you get your phone IP rated, you have to send your phone to a pretty much a third party company and then they test if your phone can withstand dust and water you know, protection. And then you gotta pay. Okay, so I've read it's anywhere between 10 to $30 per device uh, to get your phone IP rated. Now, just because your phone is not IP rated, that does not mean it's not water resistant. That just means the company simply didn't want to spend 10 to, 10 to $30 per phone to get their device IP rated. That to me makes no difference whatsoever because even if your phone is IP rated, your warranty still doesn't cover water protection or protection against uh, water damage. So what's the point in having your phone IP rated? You're throwing away all that extra money. And then the end game or the end result is you're, you, you're, you're still screwed if your phone gets wet. So. You know, so IP ratings, they don't mean anything. It's just, um, it's just specs on paper. That, that's literally all it is. It's specs on paper. If you've seen the teardown of the OnePlus 7 Pro, you will see that there are a lot of rubber gaskets all around the entire inside of the phone. And uh, from all the tests that I've seen on YouTube, the phone is water resistant. So that should not be a, uh, a purchasing factor with the, with the Galaxy S10 Plus and the OnePlus 7 Pro. If that's your worries, don't worry about it. Now, the, the other thing is wireless charging. This one's kind of my favorite because if you guys know, I, I use wireless charging. I have two wireless chargers. I have one on my nightstand and then one on um, this desk right here, pretty much. But the thing is, it's, it's pretty much a, a nice thing to have, but if you don't have it, it's not that big of a deal because uh, the fastest wireless charger, I think at the moment is the Samsung one and it's only 12 watts of wireless charging. Now, to me, that's good for if you're going to bed, you know, you just set it down on the wireless charger and that's it. You just wake up, phone's all charged, good to go. But if we're talking about practicality, you can't really do much with your phone on a wireless charger. Because when you pick it up to answer a text message, that's it, you're not charging anymore. Then you put it back down, you get another text message, you pick it up. All those times you picked it up, that's just decreasing its uh, charge level. So at practicality standpoint, wireless charging is again, specs on paper. The specs that it doesn't really matter. It, th like that should not be a purchasing factor for a phone. You know, let me put it this way. Imagine you're coming home from work, you know, your boys hit you up, say, hey, Let's go, to, uh, let's go to the bar, it's ladies night, but your phone's on 10%, right? But you're still on your way home. What do you gotta do when you get home? You gotta take a shower, you gotta shave, you gotta do all that good stuff, right? You gotta prepare. While you're doing that, what are you gonna put your phone? Or how are you gonna charge your phone? Are you gonna set it on a 12 watt wireless charger? Or are you gonna put a 30 watt charger, plug it in, and this thing charges so fast. It's, I've never experienced anything like it, obviously, because I've been using iPhone for 10 years. Um, so going from five watts charging, a measly five watts, Jesus, I, can't, I still can't even believe that. Anyway, going from five watts to 30 watts is unreal. It, it's, 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 it's crazy. 
So again, back to what I was saying, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna put a wireless charger or are you gonna put your phone on a wireless charger and get 12 watts? Or are you gonna plug in your phone and get 30 watts and by the time you shower, by the time you shave, by the time you get all ready, dude, your phone's gonna be fully charged, like hands down. So again, practicality standpoint, it's it makes more sense to plug your phone in than to just drop it on a wireless charger. It just makes more sense that way. I mean, there's not a single person that can say, oh no, no, wireless charging, that's it. It's the best thing in the entire planet. I will never go back to wired charging. There's just too many cons for having a wireless, not, not for having a wireless charger, but for using a wireless charger. There's, there's just too many cons. OnePlus 7 knows it or OnePlus knows this. So they, they decided, hey, to save some money, let's, let's, see, let's use the standard charger, but make it crazy fast and that's what they did and it works very well very well like it's almost you can you can practically see the percentage go up by just looking at it like you look at it and then you're like damn i can literally see it go up like as i'm looking at it that's that's pretty much how fast it is no joke so again wireless charger that should not really be a buying factor for for any any phone i, I mean not until wireless charging gets to at least 18 watts you know, or, or higher, preferably, I cannot really say like, I will never buy a phone because it doesn't have wireless charging or I will never brag to someone that said, you know, and say, my phone has wireless charging and yours doesn't because they will slap me back with, well, I can charge with 30 watts and you're stuck at 12 watts, you know? <laughs> so again, it's nice to have, but it's not a necessity. The next thing, a headphone jack. The Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus has a headphone jack and the OnePlus 7 Pro does not have a headphone jack. This can go one of two ways. If you need a headphone jack, the OnePlus 7 is not yours. If you don't care about a headphone jack, well then it's fair game. If you don't want a headphone jack, OnePlus 7 Pro is your best bet. It's that simple. I personally haven't used a headphone jack in two years, uh, pretty much ever since iPhone stopped having a headphone jack, I've switched completely to Bluetooth. I mean, I've been using the Galaxy Buds pretty much ever since they were released. I love them. I think they, they are, for the money, they're crazy, crazy, crazy good. I've been using them, and before that, I've been using uh, Beats, or uh, the, the Power Beats 3. And then before that, I was using uh, AirPods, I think. So I've, I've pretty much been using Bluetooth ever since Apple got rid of the headphone jack and I never really looked back. I don't really care for it. And I'm not the only one. Many people just don't care about having a headphone jack. So again, that's preference. But to say a phone is better just because it has a headphone jack doesn't make any sense because that person may not care about a headphone jack. But again, is it nice to have? Yeah, of course, there's no con to having a headphone jack. But is it a necessity? Not for some. So the next thing, SD card slot. This one I kind of agree with. I kind of wish the OnePlus 7 Pro did have an SD card slot, but at the same time, the only phone that I have ever used in my entire lifetime that had a SD card slot was the Galaxy S10 Plus. At the moment, I still had no use for it. This beast has 512 gigs of, of internal memory. Uh, listen, unless, you, unless you're pirating movies 24 seven, you're gonna have a hard time filling up either uh, even 256 gigs. In fact, my iPhone tennis max was 256 gigs and I never filled it up. I never even came close to it. I think the most I've ever filled up was like 180 gigs or 190 gigs out of that 256 gig. So again, is it better to have an SD card slot? Of course, cause it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. It's, yeah, of course it's good to have it, but again, is it a necessity? No, I, I, I really don't think it is. You know, we're, we're moving towards cloud storage anyway. Uh, most of you guys obviously know about Google Photos and Google Drive. Uh, I'm paying like $2 a month for 100 gigs of storage, and that's uh, original storage. So that helps me move all my uh, photos and videos to Google and not have to worry about it being on my phone. Now, I, I mainly did that with my Pixel uh, 3a because that only has 64 gigs and that really is not really enough even for me. So, but I still do it on my OnePlus 7 Pro with 256 gigs and I have like a lot of games on here. I have a lot of stuff on here and how much, 
am I actually using up? I didn't even check. So I'm using up, what is it? 15%. I have 218 gigabytes of free like, like storage that's left over. So is it a necessity? I don't think so. Is it nice to have? Yeah, I think SD card slot is, is, a, is, a, is a nice little feature. Uh, I wish it did have it, but at the same time, hey, if it's saving us some costs here or there, even if it's a little bit, savings is savings. These phones are way more similar than you guys really think. So if you don't care about those things that I just mentioned, you, you might as well get the OnePlus 7 Pro. Again, I'm being very unbiased over here. I have no reason to be biased because I've been using Apple iPhone for 10 years. The, the Galaxy was my first Android device. The Pixel 3a was my second. And now uh, the OnePlus uh, 7 Pro is my third. So I don't even, I didn't even have enough time to love a company to be biased towards it, like Samsung. I've only been using this phone for two months. I can't be biased towards it. I can't be biased towards the OnePlus 7 Pro. I've been using it for like 24 hours, maybe a little more now. So. It's tough to say, but what I will say is if you're living in a country where the OnePlus 7 Pro is more expensive than the Galaxy S10 Plus, of course, get the Galaxy S10 Plus. You get all those features that I just named and it's cheaper. But if you live in a country like the United States where uh, the OnePlus 7 Pro is less expensive, then get the OnePlus 7 Pro only if you don't care about those few little, what, what is it, one, two, three, four? Four little features that I just named. I don't think it's worth it. But also keep in mind, you will be getting a lot of uh, quick updates with the OnePlus 7 Pro. Uh, this phone and uh, Pixel phones and I think a few other phones get updates uh, super quick. Like I think Android Q will be available on the Samsung like next year. I'm, I'm pretty sure like the beginning of next year or hopefully by the end of this year. But this phone and Pixel phones and a few other phones, I can't really think of the name, uh, they will be getting it this summer. So there's a lot of pros and cons to everything. And I really, you know, I highly suggest not listening to the YouTubers that say this phone is better, this phone sucks because they're the one being biased towards it, you know. Um, just because a phone has less features than, uh, than the competing phone does not make that phone better because features are relative, you know? So for example, again, if you need those four features that I just named, the OnePlus 7 is not for you. If you don't care about those features, well, now you got more options. You can either choose the Galaxy S10 Plus and get those features just in case, or get the OnePlus 7 Pro for a cheaper price, depending where you are and uh, not really care about having those features. You know, I see a lot of people saying, oh, the Galaxy S10 Plus is so much better. The OnePlus 7 Pro doesn't even have wireless charging. So what? Some people may not even have a wireless charger. So do you think they are gonna be listening to you? Probably not. You gotta be fair about, com uh, about comparing phones because phones are a lot more than just features. Phones are more about how often are you gonna be using those features? Because I can also say, I mean, I, if I had a Bugatti, for example, I mean, I never will, but hey, a man can dream. If I had a Bugatti, I can't be saying, hey, my car goes 270 or 280, what is it now, I forgot, 270 miles an hour. If I was the person that was on the receiving end of that, I would be like, all right, have you ever went that fast before? Oh, no, no, I, I haven't. So why are you saying that you can go 270 miles an hour? Oh, I, I can, but I won't. You see what I'm saying? That's pretty much what features are. A phone is more about how often and how well those features work for you. Well, for you and me. So guys, that's pretty much it. The truth about the OnePlus 7 Pro is that it's a fantastic device. The screen is amazing. The battery life is insane. Yesterday I did a test I was using Quad HD Plus, or I think it's called QHD Plus now, instead of WQHD Plus. I don't know what, that, what that's about. But this phone pretty much lasted me, oh, and I was using 90 hertz refresh rate. So I was pretty much using this phone maxed out. And this phone still managed to get uh, 17 hours off the charger and seven hours on screen time. So right now I'm doing a test 1080p, or pretty much full HD, 
uh, using uh, 90 hertz. And then tomorrow I'm gonna be doing a uh, full HD using 60 hertz. So I got a lot of battery tests coming up. Um, if you guys want a sneak peek, follow me on social. I will leave something right here somewhere around this, around here. It'll be my um, Instagram, pretty much marks underscore tech. And that goes the same for Twitter as well. So guys, that's pretty much it. Both phones are fantastic. I don't like one phone over the other. I just think these two phones have very similar features, but also very different, but also both excellent. So wh whichever phone you choose, you're going to love regardless. So guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have a good day. This was Mark from Mark's Tech and adios.